Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Kali Linux version 2025.1a inside Windows. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. You're going to want at least 2 gigs of RAM, 4 is recommended, 20 gigs of hard disk space, 1 CPU core, but 2 is recommended, the Kali Linux image and VirtualBox and the extension pack. If you don't have VirtualBox installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All tools and links will be in the description below. If you found this video useful, please give us a like. Now let's get to installing Kali Linux. All right, so I'm at my Windows 11 desktop. I'm gonna go over here and open up my browser. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna download the installer image. You can use a virtual image, although I've had problems with it in the past. We're gonna go ahead and download the full image, which is gonna be this one right over here. And we're gonna be using the x86-64 version. So that's this one right over here. If you're using an Apple, you can download versions for Apple. Uh, we're doing this on a Windows 11 desktop and we're gonna click on the download link. You can see the size of the file is gonna be 4.1 gigs. So make sure you have enough space. We'll go ahead and let that download and I'll jump over to the next stop. We're gonna minimize this window and I'm gonna go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Inside VirtualBox, we're gonna create a new machine. Click on new and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Kali Linux. All right, so I gave it a name and the folder, I'm gonna be using my default folder. If space is an issue, you can always change your folder and drive. Next up is ISO image. This is gonna be the file that we just downloaded. In my downloads folder, we can see that we have it right over here. I'll click on open. All right, so the rest of this is fine. We're gonna go down over to hardware and inside hardware, you're gonna want at least two gigs of RAM. Four is better. And as long as you stay in the green space, you're gonna be fine. For CPU cores, two is highly recommended. Four is even better. It'll just run smoother. And then for hard disk, this is where the image is gonna be stored. I have it stored on a local hard drive. I have room in here. Uh, if you think space is gonna be an issue, once again, you can relocate that. And then we can go ahead and click on finish. What we're gonna do right now is boot up our virtual machine and start the installation. Go ahead and click on start. All right, so we have a couple options over here. Uh, you can use your keyboard to select whichever option that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use the graphical installation and it's gonna go ahead and start the process. First up, you're gonna select the language and then click on continue. And then you're gonna select your location. I'm gonna be using default settings all the way through. Then you have configure your keyboard. Okay, so now we can configure the network and I'm gonna be leaving my host name as Kali. You can change that if you'd like. And I'm not gonna set a domain name, click on continue. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to type in your username and password. The full name will be the name of the user and then click on continue. So this is also gonna be the same thing for the, this is gonna also be the username for my account. And now we're gonna type in a password. Here, you're gonna select your time zone. All right, so now it wants to partition the disk. We're gonna be using the first option over here, which is guided use entire disk. We'll go ahead and click on continue. And it's the only drive that we'll have here. We'll click on continue. All files in one partition, that's gonna be recommended. And now we're gonna go ahead and write changes. Write changes to disk, we'll say yes, and then click on continue. Okay, and now the installation is gonna begin. This will take a few minutes. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. For the desktop environment, we're gonna be using all default settings over here. You can modify whatever you like. Next up is gonna be the bootloader. We're gonna be using the Grub bootloader. We'll click on continue. And we're gonna be selecting the only drive that we have and clicking on continue. The installation is now complete. We can go ahead and click on continue and it's gonna reboot the virtual machine. So we're gonna let it shut down and restart. All right, so we're at the login screen and what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign in with the username and password we had typed in when we created this virtual machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are at the desktop of our virtual machine. We have Kali Linux 2025.1a installed. If we wanna expand this to the full size of our screen, we're gonna go up here into the view menu and then go to full screen and then we can click on switch. Okay, it's gonna expand, it's gonna take over my entire screen. You can use this as if it's your own desktop. And if you go up here into the menu, you're gonna see a whole bunch of preloaded applications in here for intrusion prevention, analysis, and other type of network tools. This is an excellent tool for anybody that is into network intrusion, prevention, and anything related to networks. If you're looking for guides on any of these applications, let me know in the comments below. I know I haven't made any guides on applications, but maybe that's something I should do. If you thought this video was useful, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like. I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.